Welcome to the eCamp channel. This is Zhi Hang. In this tutorial, I will show how to calculate the energy density of a supercapacitor. So last time, we talked about the differences between a 3 electron cell and a 2 electron cell. In brief, we only focus on 1 electrode for 3 electron cell and focus on the device for the 2 electron cell. So when we are calculating the energy density, the first thing we should keep in mind is that we cannot calculate energy from a 3 electron cell. The second question is how to determine the voltage window. If we are using cyclic voltammetry, we can cycle the device on a low scan rate, usually 2 to 5 mV per second for a supercapacitor, while increasing the operating potential window in about 0.2 volt increment and calculating the Coulomb efficiency. The Coulomb efficiency should be larger than 99% for an effective supercapacitor. Another way to determine the voltage is to use coronal amperometry. It means a constant potential is applied to the cell with a very large current response being recorded. The intensity of this current response will decrease over time until it finally stabilizes. The final current density, usually with a unit of ampere per gram, means the leakage current. It should be close to zero if there is no side reactions that are occurring. So for here, negative 0.35 will be suitable for operating. Now, we know the voltage window, and we also have CV curve or GCD curve to calculate the capacitance. It is very common to see the energy calculation equation to be e equal to 1 over 2 CV square. However, this equation is only for the supercapacitor with perfect linear shaped discharge curve. To calculate the energy for nonlinear GCD curve, we should use a more general equation that is e equal to 1 over m integral from z to t i v dt. The mass used to calculate the energy should be the total mass of both positive and negative electrode. In terms of calculating the energy density of the device, then m should be the mass of the total device. To calculate the average power density, we divide E by T. To further obtain the random plot, we should plot E as a function of P at different operating rate. Thank you for watching the video. See you next time.